Hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel. I am the Desert Claw, and in this week we're going to talk about episode 64 of Attack on Titan, the final season. Uh, just for those that know, uh, I am a anime-only viewer up to the point of the last season, so uh, try to keep manga spoilers in the comments to a minimal. Um, I'm trying to make this series for anime-only viewers anyway, because I am one of them, so I actually don't have any clue uh, what's going on from here on out with Attack on Titan, so... Uh, just keep that in mind, and uh, if you haven't seen this week's episode yet, there will be spoilers. I'll be talking about the whole episode, so keep that in mind. You might want to go watch it and come back, and we'll talk about it. So, uh, besides, before we get going, uh, hit the like button and leave a comment, and then subscribe for more content. Subscribing is free and really helps out the growth of the channel. Okay, so the last couple episodes have been a introduction of sorts to how Eldians live in the Marleyan Empire, and... For the most part, they're basically shock troops. Um, they, they're a, a, a culture that has been minimalized and marginalized as evil. And in order to make up for that evil, they basically have to fight in Marley's uh, empire war. I, I believe the lore is that the Marleyan Empire is the biggest empire on the planet. And the reason for that is because of the use of Titan science and their large uh, mass of Eldian. Um, I, I don't know what you would call them, but... Yeah, so you get you get the opposite view because the Marleyan or the Eldians that live in Marley live in a wall just like Aaron and crew lived in a wall on Paradise Island or Paradise Island. Um, we learned that last season when you finally learn the what's in the basement through Grisha Jaeger. Um, you learn that uh, Zeke, who is Aaron's half brother, is half royalty because his mother was a Fritz, and you learn how Grishna got to the island because they use. The island is almost like a prison of sorts. They take uh, Marleyans that, or not Marleyans, Eldians that live in Marley that that don't follow the rules the way they want to. They inject them in, with Titan serum and kick them over. And that's why you have so many mindless Titans on the island, which we'll get to the reason why that is helpful to the narrative that is happening. So after four episodes or so, uh, actually three episodes, you now get to see Aaron and Reiner speaking for the first time. Aaron has been teased in these episodes several times uh, as he was posing as a Marleyan named Kruger. And Kruger is the, the guy who Aaron got the attack Titan power from. Well, I went from Kruger to Grishna to Aaron. And so he took on the name Kruger and Falco here knew him as Kruger. Uh, Reiner immediately knows him as Aaron. And Aaron and Reiner are having a talk, but it, the talk is more or less happening in the background because Willie Tiber is about to start a play that goes over the common mythology that are told to both Marleyans, the world, and the Eldians that they, they control. And this mythology is basically this. Um, Titans ruled the world and one Marleyan named Helo stood up with the help of the Tibers and they enacted a scheme to get the families of the Eldian Empire to fight amongst themselves. And once they had wiped each other out, Helos and the Tibers came together, announced that they were were one, and they defeated the king uh, of the Eldians, King Fritz, and he fled to Paradise Island, and that is a story. However, because Titans, uh, their memories are passed down by the people who inherit them, so if you don't, not a big, if you don't, let me just remind everybody, a Titan, a Titan power, if it's one of the, the main Titans is passed down by you turning somebody into a Titan and then they, them eating the person with the power and then that power is inherited. And then thus the, the memories are inherited. If you go to other episodes, the new uh, Jaw Titan has inherited Ymir's memories, for example, or at least some of them. And so he, he talks about the real mythology and the real mythology is that Helos and the Tiber uh, family came up with this thing as a lie, basically. And that the real hero of the story is Carl Fritz, the king. Uh, apparently, the king was so ashamed of his empire that he fled the island on purpose and made an arrangement with Marley and the world that he would make sure that his, his subjects never knew what was going on, they'd always be locked away, and that he would never use his power and if, but if, if Marley ever did come from him, he would, he would, his philosophy would pass down the line 
so that they would just give up the power willingly. And then this and this just transitions back to um, Aaron and Reiner. And so Aaron now understands that the reason why the four warriors, three, if you watch the series, because Marcel was eaten by Ymir, the reason why they were there was to test to see what the king, the current king would do, which was one of the Rice family, I believe, prior to Krishna cocking things up, basically. Um, and then retrieve the founding titan. And if the mythology or the story was true, they, then anybody who followed Carl Fritz's ideology would just surrender to the warriors and surrender that power to Marley. Nefariously, Marley needs this power to continue its expansion because I believe it's the first or second episode you see that the world is now creating anti-Titan uh, arms. Titans are becoming extinct, basically, in the sense of their power. And Marley needs the Founding Titan to continue their power. So they're not doing this altruistically. They want the Founding Titan so they can use the rumbling to their advantage. And uh, the rumbling is basically, uh, Tiber basically explains this, is where the, the walls around... Uh, Paradise Island are actually giant colossal titans and the rumbling is where they activate and then they just roll over the earth. Um, I'm assuming they think they can control that. I don't know if it's controllable. I don't know if it's just a they activate and they don't they go and until everything's gone. I don't know. And so you get this contrast between Aaron and Reiner and both Aaron and Reiner were lied to by their prospective governments. For example, the people who lived within the walls, they viewed Titans as the enemy, which is ironic because Titans are them. And so they are then basically being taught to hate themselves. Uh, if you go back in the early story, anybody who tried to escape the island, like you saw pictures of people making balloons or anything like that, they are quickly taken out by the team that, that uh, Kenny ran. Kenny being uh, Levi's uncle or whatever. Uh, he's also one of the Ackermans. And so... The people who follow Carl, Carl Fritz's ideology did it with a vengeance. Uh, and the wall call and all that stuff helped with that. And on the flip side, on the Marley side, every Eldian that lives in that camp is believed that they are evil uh, because of their pastor's transgressions and they have, to, they have to live on the way they are and they also have to fight in wars and that their powers are an abomination and blah, blah, blah. And, the, and clearly the rest of the world sees this too. If you go to the, I think it's like this, the first or second episode where they're having a war with another country. And uh, I believe they call the Titans devils. So it's it's actually a very sad situation. So at, at that moment, Aaron and Reiner seem to understand each other. Like Aaron said that he, uh, Reiner basically asked him if he was here to kill him like uh, Aaron had proclaimed. And Aaron had actually, states that he'd actually forgotten about that. And the reason he forgot about that is because he came over and he lived under these walls and he lived under the same roof as these other people. And so he understood Reiner. And then Reiner starts claiming that it's his fault that Aaron's mother died because Annie and Bertholdt wanted to turn back and then he wanted to keep going forward. Because in his mind, he wanted that glory because he wants his family to be honorary Marleyans so they don't have to live under this oppression anymore. And so he, his motivations aren't terrible. Uh, and then Aaron basically holds out his hand and says that he understands Reiner. And it seems like to Reiner that Aaron has changed his tune. And then all of a sudden Aaron turns into the his version of the Attack Titan, which looks way different now that he's an adult. And uh, Aaron goes straight for Willie Tiber and it looks like he's going to eat him at the end. Um, I'm assuming he's trying to absorb Tiber's power because he's he, currently Aaron has two Titan powers. He has the Attack Titan, the Founding Titan, and then he has like supplementary powers when he took the vial for like hardening, for example. So if he's able to get the Tiber's powers, he'll be like nigh unstoppable. And I'm not really sure what the Warhammer's powers are. I'm avoiding looking them up on the wiki because I want to be surprised. So keep that to yourself if you know uh but uh yeah so this was aaron's decor decoration and prior to that though it was almost like to me he was trying to tell reiner that maybe he doesn't have harsh feelings of the eldians in the camp maybe aaron wants to save the eldians too but the way he might be going about it is quite extreme uh, other things you saw in this episode you saw a soldier that was pretending to be marley and that is clearly armin and if that's true armin's like 
Not only is because he's a colossal titan, he's also much taller in real life now. It looks like he he'll he'll tower over Aaron. I'm not too sure. Um, and he makes sure that the current warriors that have powers are taken out. Uh, that includes the the cart, the jaw, and then the beast, who is Zeke. Uh, he got sent away somewhere else. We don't know where that is off screen. And so the scout troop or whatever they are now, the new army of Paradise Island, who is now under Historia, uh, is here, apparently. Because uh, Falco was having Aaron, or Aaron was having Falco send letters out for him. And he actually claims that those letters are going to his friends. So, yeah, this was... I love this episode. I love the contrast between the play and Reiner and Aaron's story. And then how and the reason why the events happened uh, at the beginning. Uh, this is one of those series, I think, once it's over, it's going to be great to go back and rewatch or reread everything. And you start to see the things... Uh, put, get put together. Uh, Fire Force is really good at this too. It's very good at building its mythology over time, and, you, and it has these things intertwined with the story already. But you're you're ignorant to it. You don't know it's there. So, yeah. Longer episode. I had a lot to talk about this episode. I'm really excited about the next one. It's probably going to be extremely action packed. Uh, strong showing for Attack on Titan: The Final Season. All four episodes have been amazing. Uh, if you are not watching Attack on Titan, now is the time because you will be able to binge it in its entirety, likely if you start now. Um, I don't think this is a st extremely long season. I've heard anything from 14 to 16 episodes uh, are only in this final season. And there is a worry that um, the manga, final volume of the manga, and the final episode of the season are going to be very close together. So we don't want an array situation where the the ending is basically the same but one is more unsatisfying than the other so i'm telling mappa <laughs> chill out on the last final episodes if you can't keep up with the manga that's what i'm saying i'm perfectly fine with waiting and i think everybody else is perfectly fine with waiting so yeah if you like this content hit the subscribe button hit the like button leave a comment and come back for more anime and manga uh, discussion i'm the desert claw and i hope you all have a good one Bye.